Okay, it's a foggy afternoon here, Sunday. I don't know what the date is. Anyway, today we're talking about how I attract hummingbirds. Uh, we have quite a few that come around here. Our yard is a hot spot. Uh, we've designed it that way and it's come through. Uh, and so I'm gonna talk about a couple of different little tricks or things that we do to attract and keep hummingbirds coming back to your yard in San Francisco. The first is our plant selection. Um, we don't have a big selection. We have salvia plants. Okay, here's a salvia. It's a purple one. We call this one king. There's another salvia called orange skyscraper. Um, it's kind of like more pink now. It's definitely changed color when it matured out, but when we bought it, it was orange. Same style of salvia. The hummingbirds love this one. This is one that the this is one that the lady downstairs bought another salvia kind of a burgundy color very pretty like the pot another salvia in the collection this is actually a clipping off king that i gave to the downstairs neighbor lady and she propagated it into this we have quite a few of them two different two different species of the salvia plant. One of them has long tubular flowers and the other one's kind of short tubular flowers. We have a lot of them all over the yard. We have a lemon tree. Here's our lemon tree. Uh, all these small lemons started off as flowers and the hummingbirds love the lemon flowers. Although now you don't see any flowers. You see all the baby lemons we have going. So you can imagine when it's flowering, it's loaded and the hummingbirds flock to this tree. We have this orange plant that the landlord bought like a year and a half ago. Charles bought this about, this will be the second year we've had it. He probably bought it last spring. Hummingbirds loving on this one. Little tubular flowers. Looks kind of like the salvia flower to a certain degree. It's growing great and hummingbirds love that as well. Now we also have bird feeders. Uh, that's, you know, a big way that we attract them. We have three here. We have one over here back underneath hidden on the other side of the deck rail. We have one in front of the kitchen window and then we have one in front of the house, which Actually, the one in front of the house attracts a lot of birds. Um, I've seen actually two of them feeding off of one feeder at the same time, which in, I've, in other places I've seen it a lot, but around here it's fierce competition. This is our feeder that's in front of the kitchen window. And then we have our other one is over there down below. It's okay, buddy, just keep eating. Look at him, I'm right, I moved right up on the window. He doesn't care. Um, what happened to the, uh, any new development with that lemon tree after we trimmed it? Um, it looks good and then the landlord. This is our feeder that's in front of the house, opposite from the deck in the garden. Uh, this is our living room window and they love this feeder. Little hummingbird right there. What's up, buddy? You might look at this as like a cheater way. That's not really a way, but it's just more of a, a way of thinking. And that is placement. Placement of where I have my devices and or plants. Hummingbirds are fierce with each other. They fight each other. If a guy is here and this is his area, anybody who comes and lands goes over and starts pecking at him or you know, they bump. <laughs> and they're chasing each other all around the yard. 
Um, it's not like they, after a hard day of work, they go to the bar and hang out with each other. These guys all hate each other. So if I have one feeder in front of my kitchen window, that dominant male is gonna be able to sit here and make sure nobody else touches his feeder. But if I have a feeder over the kitchen window, I have a feeder under the rail, I have a feeder in front of the house, plus I have all these plants, like one guy can't control the area. And if he does and he chases someone off, well then there's a third or fourth guy that are sitting there just hanging out in the things and swoop in and then they start sucking off the plants. And so that's kind of, you got to start thinking like that, in my opinion, in order to get hummingbirds. Because otherwise you're going to get one hummingbird at best and he's going to dominate the area and you're only going to see one hummingbird. But if you spread all of your devices and plants out, then, you know, things change a little bit. He can't control the area so much and then you'll get more birds coming into the area. So we have the king, we have hot lips, salvia. We have the bird feeder there. We have red lips over the edge. We got another salvia here. Down there we have the lemon tree. We have a salvia beside it. We have a salvia over there by tomato tower. We have we have the blue salvia here. There's the orange plant that Charles bought. So we have our stuff spread out everywhere. The feeder normally is under the deck there where feet we're filling it right now. And up over the roof in the front of the house, we have our other feeder that's at our living room. So that's basically what I do. I have plants, I have hummingbird feeders, and plant device placement. Between those things, I mean, we have a pretty abundant, you know, I don't know how many we have. I've seen three right here on the deck at the same time. Two of them fighting and one of them watching. Um, but then there's other ones and, you know, we have a definite hot spot here. So I hope you like that. Let me know in the comments.